Hey, it's Nash. It's the week where we survive with only a knife uh, in the wilderness for a week. So I gotta find shelter, make a fire, get food, water, not in that order, um, and then watch out for monsters, pigs, you know, ticks with all kinds of diseases. If everything goes well by the end of the week, I'll be fully sustainable, so come along. Go out into the wilderness and we survive with only a knife or two knives. We got smaller mora for pretty much everything and a little bit bigger one for chopping. So while we're out here, you know, we focus on shelter, fire, water, food, sustainability, survivability. Uh, so the start was getting dropped off here, find this creek, jump in for a swim, get some wood for a bow drill fire, and then ruck back. Miserable. And our gear is even less than uh, everyday carry, so we've got what I'm wearing, sunglasses, shirt, pants, belt, whatever, got a watch. Uh, and then I just have a hat, a sarong or shemog, and some garbage that I found, a plastic water bottle for uh, solar distilling water. Temporary solution, because first we have to find a reliable source of water after I get my shelter and fire going. Uh, or maybe in the reverse, because it's crazy hot. And there's uh, pigs and super ticks out here. So we've got a lot to worry about, so I guess everything is priority one. So uh, eventually, if you complete all these challenges, you earn better gear. The goal is not to just brute force your way through the seven days, but prove that you can survive sustainably and that, uh, you know, once you've, once you've mastered the primitive skill, you get the modern tool to highlight the difference between the two and how much better your life would be if you were properly prepared. So, uh, you know, by the end of this, if I complete all the challenges, when I complete all the challenges, um, who knows, you know, it uh, should be great. Hopefully it's enough to keep me alive. Now I'm looking for a site to camp, build my shelter, and get everything started. So, here we go. There's lots of horse dumps around here. Horse dumps and bees. Which is very off-putting to me. Look at this. Boot for scale. I don't really want to go into the forest proper, even though it's got good cover and resources, just because it's on such a slant. Sleeping on a slant is... Not ideal, to say the least. So, I might just, uh, might just make do on this plane that's growing a whole ton of Korean mint, which is super delicious. Uh, and then I can just harvest that while I'm looking for food. Look at all this mint. In a week, I will have eaten it all. Uh, yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll just import my materials and watch out for bees and giant horse dumps. Oh yeah, look at all these resources. I am definitely going to be able to get a shelter. Look at this nightmare. This thing is crazy spiky. This is a day runner for sure. Gotta try not to build my shelter or toilet paper out of this. I think this is it. It's going to be my house. Right between these two trees. First challenge is to build a completely waterproof shelter with a fire in front of it. It's actually the first two challenges. But uh, yeah, found an area. It's gonna be shady about three quarters of the day and it's crazy hot right now. It's uh, 100 degrees with super high humidity in the Ozark Mountains. Uh, so I'm gonna do that relatively grassy so it'll be soft ground, free of horse dumps, right on the forest edge. Well, kind of in a grotto in the middle of a forest. That way I have access to materials. Um, and then while I am building my fortress, I have the sun curing my water, disinfecting it in this uh, plastic garbage bottle here, and I've got some mint leaves floating in there for flavor and extra, extra disinfectant, so I'm good to go. Okay, got the outline done. Don't have a lot of extra sticks or branches or logs for doing a rough outline, but I've got tons of rocks. So you can see here I've cleared a path for the bed and outlined it in rocks that'll also form a little bit of a support, building kind of a bivouac type structure. 
We've got the outline of the fire pit here. I'll clear a couple of those branches away so that there's no danger there. And in using these rocks, I'm also making the area safer for me to walk around in for when I come stumbling around the middle of the night needing to pee. This will give you a rough idea of what I'm going for here. Then I'm going to fill the bed in with leaves, because the great thing about leaves is, is they protect you from mud. And they're also a great insulator. But, uh, and I've got a ton of them. Although the roof should be fully thatched, so water shouldn't get in, my night sweats might saturate the ground, so I'd rather have some leaves there. And they're soft. As the shelter comes along, I am drying my sarong and various gear. There's my gross water. It's actually delicious. Taking off my boots and socks to let them dry, because they've been wet and friction on my feet for about two hours now. Uh, what time is it now? One. Okay, so for about four hours now, uh, since the challenge in the creek bed, and wet frictiony feet can completely destroy you if you let it. So I figured I'd uh, take a little rest and have a sit down and try not to sweat to death while I contemplate my next move. Oh, score. Nature provides. That's gonna be a new water carrier. Heck yeah, sassafras. You can tell it's sassafras, aside from being delicious, because it has three different styles of leaves and a very distinctive smell. Now I can make mint and sassafras tea. Perfect. And this is the finished skeleton of the shelter. Next, we're gonna add some cedar boughs or pine boughs for thatching and then a billion leaves on top of that. So I found a few half-dead boughs to get it started. In the meantime, I need to go hunt for water because I'm out and it's crazy hot and it's day one and I'm about to have a heat stroke. So we'll call that a uh, productive break. <sighs> All right, so I'm taking my break and I'm off to go find water. If I can't find any, I'm gonna have to ruck back to that river and get a little bit because I'm dying. But I found two trash bottles and some cordage. So I'm doing all right. The rock down to the river is exhausting, but it's worth it. Plus, I found blackberry, pine, and St. John's wort to add to the water. So the pine will help disinfect the water. St. John's wort is uh, an antidepressant mood stabilizer booster, and uh, the blackberries are delicious, full of vitamins. So I'm going to be rocking some legit potions here. I'm doing fine, it's just that uh, it's a tough go. I don't know. Clouds looking kind of gnarly. We'll see how this goes. All right, this is as uh, done as my shelter is. And it is threatening to rain fiercely. Well, if a storm's coming in and I can't get finished, I'll use salvage. Look at this. I found a piece of tin, hammered it out, and I'm going to use it to try to make a wind and rain break on the most likely side that a storm could come from. So that'll buy me time until tomorrow when I can finish this thing. All right, I found another piece. Not only will this help with weatherproofing, but the metal will also reflect my body heat back at me. Take that, nature, and human garbage. Okay, it doesn't look ideal. Uh, it looks like I cobbled this together from a plane crash or something. But I mean, the, uh, if the idea of the morning ruck down to the river and getting submerged and coming back up with our bow drill kits was to simulate crashing on a boat, then this could be me finding salvage on whatever boat wreck island I wind up on. So there. Look at that. That is a dehydrated foot. Looks like the foot of a corpse, but guess what? It's my foot. Gotta get on that water and not get Hong Kong boot rot. <sighs> Start of day two, 6.30 in the morning. That was uh, probably one of the worst 
nights of sleep I've ever had. Well, I didn't really get much sleep. The mosquitoes are... Uh, the mis I didn't get much sleep. The mosquitoes are restless. They, they, they just never stopped and kept coming and coming. And Something else. Ants? I don't know. The, the bugs were ripping me apart. And then from 2.30 to 4.30, I had to deal with wild pigs keep trying to do stuff around me. I couldn't tell exactly how many there were, but I just kept getting up, hucking rocks and stuff at them because I didn't want to bore to run through my shelter. So I'm uh, pretty tired. And now I gotta finish up the fire. I gotta make a bow drill fire and get it going and finish the shelter before the end of today, so. Great. All right, day two, I've carved a bow drill fire kit. The plan is to bow drill it up till I get a coal, then put that over here in the bird's nest that I've made, and then progressively larger sticks until I have a sustainable fire. So let's get to drilling, bow drilling. Well, the fire's still a no-go, but voila, the shelter is complete. It's kind of a combination debris shelter bivouac. I can sit up in it. Uh, I decided to keep the tin because it was a good good resource, but I went ahead and added more cedar boughs and coated it in leaves. So it should be fully waterproofed with a little bit of airflow in there. So next up is getting the fire so I don't die from pigs and bugs. Well, four failed kits and a day of hard work later, we have fire. Also, I found an empty can of beans so I can fill that with water and boil stuff in it. You know, food got my shelter, that means I'll get a poncho. So now I've unlocked mobile camping. So now I can set up my shelter and tear it down super quick, which means I can expand my range and hunt for resources. Uh, now it's on to the next challenges. We got the before. And the after. Made a little alcove in here. Keep the fire from getting there. Got a little wreath I'm working on. Turn that into a basket. And my completed shelter. Not bad. All right, so I've got the fire to shield me from pigs and some bugs. And then I made this out of my shirt and hat, like a beekeeper's suit, to shield me from the rest of the bugs. Plus I've got some hand covers I can put on. So uh, I should be wrapped in a force field. So as long as it doesn't rain, I'll be all right. Day 3, 6.30 a.m. The force field suit and bonfire were a raging success. Um, no bugs got to me. No pigs bothered me. I actually got some sleep. It was great. I slept fantastic. Well, at least as good as I always do, which is not great. The secret to being able to sleep anywhere is to always sleep terribly. Probably move to another location for more, more challenges uh, for the remaining five days um, that's it <laughs> I'll say this for uh, a few days of no food but scavenged grains I feel fine but I'm really sluggish it makes my morning workout pretty tough I want to work out properly or maybe eat I just saw a massive pig run by, like a huge black pig, probably almost up to my waist. Um, I really don't want to get murdered by something so adorable. It was really cute, but uh, super dangerous. So next time I see it, hopefully I'm eating it. All right, day three, 11.20 in the morning. New terrain, Riverside. Cliffside, looking for a drinkable water source and a place to set up camp so that I can get some fish. 
and not die. Well, I found a temporary campsite right on a game trail, which isn't recommended. Right off this stream, right now I'm just carving my gigging stick and uh, we set some fish traps. So let's get some fish. Evening of day three. Uh, the across the river campsite sucked all the balls, so we moved because it was nothing but ivy and cliff sides, like the angled cliffs and uh, thorns and moisture. It was terrible. So I've moved to the opposite side of the river. Things are pretty good. Haven't caught a fish yet, but now I've built the all night fire, which is this. The theory being that you stack progressively smaller pyramids up there and cover the holes with dirt so that when you light the top, it slowly burns down and the dirt prevents it from jumping levels. So it should burn all night. This isn't the best example, but it's a survival situation. So you take what you get and this is what you get because I'm tired. Notice the dirt mode around to try to prevent me from burning down the forest. So we'll see how this holds up overnight. And we are off to the races. Good morning, day four. Just finished my morning exercises. It's 7.40 in the morning and uh, they were really, really tough. A handful of grasshoppers over the course of four days plus a bunch of leaves is not enough food for me. Uh, so I'm really hoping today's the day I catch some fish. Had my first food dream last night. I dreamt of a baked sweet potato tree. You just walk up and pull them off. I caught a trout, and it's a beast. Guess I'll put off dying one more day. One of the bad things about this is that the flies are on you all the time because you smell like a wrestler's crotch all the time. You're just a rotting sack of sweaty meat, which doesn't feel bad, but it uh, doesn't feel great either. And the flies, the flies will rip you apart. Morning of day five. Uh, some pigs got into the camp while I was asleep and ate some fishing supplies. And it rained pretty much the second half of yesterday. Uh, but not bad, still got some sleep. This is what the camp's looking like right now. Just been sleeping on a ground tarp with my sarong, and there's my all-night fire that uh, is out now. Just a couple more days and I'll have a toothbrush and some ointment I can put on all my gashes. Day five, middle of the afternoon. The food crash has finally hit me. It's rough. I keep alternating between getting up and trying to be productive and just having to lie down. Now I'm on a quest for berries or whatever because the fish and turtles are not biting currently. And there's so many bugs. There's so many bitey, buzzy, loud bugs. I fought a snake, it was about two feet long, as thick as my thumb, jet black. No idea what it was, except that I really wanted to eat it. I didn't have my big gig with me, so I just picked up a, uh, like a moldy log and I bashed it over the head and then it kind of reared up and looked at me. So I bashed it again, but then my log broke. Uh, so I grabbed another stick and tried to get it, and then it ran up a tree, and then I was throwing rocks at it. And it just climbed up this tree super high and then went in a hole, so I didn't get it. Start of day six. Uh, all I ate yesterday was a handful of boiled crawdads. They were tiny. Not good enough. I can feel my body breaking down its own substances for fuel. My exhalations taste like uh, metal acid. Uh, there's, there's just not enough food here. Lost a lot of weight. It's not a sustainable location. But on the plus side, I haven't had to poop for six days. So. That's convenient, but I also don't have the energy for pretty much anything. Uh, but only one more day, 
and, uh, and then I'll be out of here. Well, this is the final day, and then tomorrow I'll be out, so... And I found some prickly pear, made a basket, caught some fish, ate some turtles, made my cordage, accomplished everything I needed to accomplish, and made it through the seven days. Success! Though this video is just for fun and not intended to teach anyone, if you might be interested and want to learn the skills, I recommend studying bushcraft and survival skills. It's fun. I've spent months at a time learning from various schools like uh, Knowles, the National Outdoor Leadership School, Solo, Sigma 3, a few others. Uh, last time I was at any of them, they were pretty good, so if you have an interest, I say check them out. Even if you don't have weeks or months at a time to devote to travel and study, you can take a day course in your area. Even big chains like REI usually have some good offerings. Happy learning. Thanks for watching. Nash out.